Hey, Victor Gadea here from Recordium, and in this lesson, I'm going to show you some really easy and effective ways to EQ your drum recordings. And you know, this is for when you're just starting out, or if you you know have been working on recording drums for a while now. These are some of the core concepts that you may have missed, or that you need to pick up right from the start. EQ is arguably the single most effective type of effects processing that we can do to improve the sound of your drums, whether that's the individual microphones, kick, snare, so on, or the drum kit as a whole, or different combinations together, EQing those combinations of microphones, this will have the largest impact on improving that sound. And so to demonstrate some of the concepts here today, I, I pulled the uh, recording session that I just captured uh, uh, very recently uh, with John Moffat up at Drumeo, and uh, John Moffat is the, uh, was the veteran, longtime 30-year veteran drummer for Michael Jackson until he passed away. Um, and he's also toured with you know, all, all of the other Jackson family and uh, Elton John and Madonna and uh, George Michael. The list goes on. It's, it's a very, very uh, reputable uh, artist in this industry. Uh, John was an amazing person as well. And so the first thing that I want to talk about is cut versus boost. Now, if you look at a standard EQ here, uh, you'll see that there's, you know, I have some some dips going on in, in this EQ, so that would be a cut, uh, you know, pulling a portion of the sound of that microphone down, that would be a cut, and pulling it and boosting it up would be a boost. And so what I generally do with EQ is I cut a lot more than I'm boosting portions of the sound. So I essentially want to find uh, a portion or multiple portions of the sound that I do not like and then I want to minimize that a little bit and cut that out. And uh, so, you know, I, that when I do that process with individual mics and the drum kit as a whole, that brings me to the sound that I'm looking for a lot faster than if I were to try to boost a lot of areas of the sound that I do like. So I definitely recommend starting out with that mentality first, cut more than boost. But of course, it's okay to boost certain portions of, of the sound that you do like. And the next core concept I wanna talk about is the high pass filter. So what this is, is uh, I have the, again on the snare microphone here. Um, as you can see what's happening with the, the slope here, uh, it is going to cut off all of the sound of that source, of that signal source microphone, we'll call it, uh, from a certain point and everything below that. So as you can see, uh, you know, if I set it at 140 hertz, here's that point where I, there's 140 hertz, and it's going to slope downward and cut everything off at a certain rate, which is the, the slope, uh, and, and uh, nothing will exist in the sound uh, you know, below that point. And so why do we do that? We do that to clean up, you know, every single microphone that's recorded. Uh, you know, we, we don't want to have that really low sub range sound uh, of that microphone capture in that sound source. Even on a bass drum microphone, I will still use a high pass filter, but I'll show you here, I'll just do something like a really steep curve and I won't cut off a lot of the sub range of that microphone. Maybe I'll roll it off at about 40 hertz or so, or 50 hertz, depending on how much sub range of that, uh, uh, that bass drum microphone that I need in the source. So I have essentially a high pass filter on every single microphone track. Yes, even the bass drums, that might sound crazy, uh, but um, you know, maybe don't start out with a high pass on your bass mic if you're just starting the, you know, to use EQs, because uh, you could end up you know, easily, very easily cutting off too much of that bass end, or if you feel comfortable with what I just mentioned, give it a shot. So first on the snare, I'm gonna play back and start cutting off some of that sub range with a high pass and listening for portions of the sound that I don't like. And uh, we have, we actually in this recording had two top snare microphones, an Earthworks SR20 LS and a Shure SM57. Right now, let's just not worry about multiple mics. I'm just muting the 57 and we'll work on the Earthworks mic.
Cool, so as you saw, I swept the high pass up until it cut off too much of the snare sound, and uh, you know, then I brought it back down, and I kind of wavered a little bit back up and forth, and uh, you know, found that midpoint where I'm not cutting off the fatness of the snare drum, because that's something you don't want to do as well course, depending on the genre and the, uh, you know, the overall mix of the song, uh, maybe you do want more fatness or not. And so what I didn't like about the snare drum was just one pitch tone, overtone that was ringing pretty strong. And so, you know, to cut that, like I mentioned cutting, uh, we're going to take one EQ point, boost it up quite a bit, you know, 10, anywhere from 10 to up to 20 dB, depending. Uh, and then we will see sweep that frequency point across the spectrum. And, you know, we'll really hear what I'm listening for is what I really when you know, basically when it sounds the worst, when do when do I really not like it? Uh, but for this snare drum, uh, I'm going to be really trying to pinpoint that actual pitch that I was talking about. And and then we will cut that down. And that's essentially it for the boost, sweep, and cut. And then the sound will be that much better. So let's check it out. The difference is subtle when taking that EQ out and putting it back in, uh, but you know when you do more of these uh, sort of uh, cuts and surgical moves on your microphones uh, together, you know listening to them in the whole mix as well. Of course, we also want to EQ not just soloed on an instrument, but with playing all of the tracks together. Uh, it will just be that much more glued together all the way across every single microphone. And of course, this drum recording, uh, you know, it requires that kind of uh, work in detail detail on each of the microphones because uh, there was a lot. It was a very large kit, a lot of microphones to, uh, to capture all of those sounds with high fidelity and stuff. So now let's talk about what I did on the bass drum microphone. And again, there are multiple microphones on the bass drum. There was a 602 at the porthole and a AKG D112 inside of the bass drum, sort of my favorite combo, and a Subkick uh, Solomon Mics uh, Low Freak out on the uh, bat on the rezo head on the bass drum. So digging into the EQ here, we'll just talk about the 602, which is what I call the all range bass drum mic at the porthole uh, pointed towards the bearing edge, meeting the bass drum head on the batter side. And uh, it looks like uh, we've done a sharp little uh, cut right here at 87 hertz, which is an odd one. Uh, let's check that out. I, I don't quite remember. Uh, and then a, a dip, a, a wide dip in the frequency spectrum over at 215 hertz in the low mid. And um, looks like I, I knocked down a tiny bit of the point to the, at 5300 um, hertz or uh, 5.3 kilohertz, where the beater, that's kind of where the beater's smacking across the head, so maybe it was a little bit bright sounding. And then we roll off the very top end of the frequency spectrum. And if you choose to do that, um, then be very light or careful with that, or maybe not use a, uh, what that is, is, is called a low pass filter. Uh, maybe just try something uh, like a, just a, a, a shelf that will bring down a little bit of that top end. And what I'm trying to do with that is bring down a little bit of the symbols uh, bleeding through into that bass drum mic. So um, let's just have a listen here and I'll play with some of the EQ points. Uh, I'm really curious about that 87 hertz. Let's see what's going on there.
Great. So what's happening there is uh, just with the tuning and the muffling that he had going on in the drum, there is a buildup at that right at that frequency point at 87 hertz. Uh, where it was, a, it was you know a little unpleasant and it was rumbling through. I remember uh, you know it just sort of affected the overall drum mix as a whole, and um, you know that's why it's a sharp little narrow uh, uh, range of the frequency spectrum that it's affecting. Just a little cone that I'm dipping out just to try to pinpoint just that that uh, uh, frequency point at 87 hertz. And as you could hear when I pulled that down, it was much more pleasant. Uh, so then the low mid here at 215 hertz, that's just a little bit of mud in the in the signal. Um, and you know, let's just have a listen to that and you know, boosting that back up and see what's happening there. Again, so the changes are very subtle, but when you make these subtle changes across all of the microphones, really they add up uh, to a much higher fidelity drum mix as a whole. And so let's just listen to the whole thing bypassed and unbypassed. and the high pass filter. Now, I hope you have a subwoofer uh, or really high quality headphones where they can go down to a really sub range, uh, which isn't too common necessarily. Um, but uh, if I did not roll off at uh, 43 Hertz, uh, what I'm hearing is, is like the lowest of low sub being captured by that uh, Sennheiser 602 mic. And, you know, keeping that in the mix, it'll just, be crazy to have that really low sub range left over in the mix. Uh, it, it may, uh, you know, if somebody ever listens to your mix on, uh, a, you know, a system where they have a subwoofer, it may make it go a little crazy in that very low end. So essentially, I'm going to cut that off, uh, but not too high up in the spectrum because we want the bass drum to still have a lot of low sub range power to it. And for the toms, let's just talk about one of them, the 12 inch tom, and you're gonna hear a really dramatic change uh, with the massive amount of cutting that I'm doing here uh, and a little bit of boost as well. And uh, so there's just a little bit more overtones than I would you know, normally want in a 12 inch tom. And so what I did is I, I found one point whether it was it was really abundant with the uh, the ring overtones in the, in the tom, and I cut that down, and there was still more to come. Uh, so I, I started at the low end, uh, uh, you know, the low mids first, and then I swept around with the highs or, or the actual mids, and then found another point. And then once I really scooped those, then it really sounded good. And then of course uh, I wanted a bit more more fidelity right on the root note of the drum, and I found where that was and, and boosted that up. So let's listen with before and after. And that is how powerful the boost, sweep, find what you don't like, and cut can really be for you, especially with a little bit wonkier tuning or, or overtones that are happening in your drums. Now with the overheads, really depending on the genre and the room and the placement of them and how many more microphones you had on the kit, you may want them to capture more warmth and more drum shells, or you may want that to have less. And so for this mix, I wanted just a sort of a medium balance. I want the, uh, the tom, close tom microphones in the snare and the bass to cover a lot of that low warmth uh, you know, from the cl those close mics and the overheads to really get a lot more of the ambience and cymbals, um, but still have a decent amount of, you know, sort of shell sound, uh, drum shell sound in them as well. So uh, we're really not doing too much to the overheads. And again, there are multiple mics. Let's just focus on one 
um, uh, EQ, and, and of course I will simply duplicate that EQ to each of the overheads or work on them at the same time depending on what your recording and mixing setup is. And so let's check out the left overhead only, and I've collapsed it to mono just so that we can you know, get a, a nice full fidelity right in front of our face as we're EQing something. I do that actually when I EQ all of the instruments, even if I'm only working on one, I monoize it or I pan it up the center so that I can hear very nice and equally just right in my face uh, from both of the speakers. So as you can hear, it was just a little bit of that uh, sort of cloudiness uh, and build up at about 350, 400 hertz in the room uh, with all of the instruments going on, all the voices, uh, just they really start to build up and add on one another. Uh, and, and it just sort of gets uh, you know unclear in that range. So I just scooped out a bit at uh, 360 hertz and did the, of course, the high pass roll off uh, with a lower slope so it wasn't too steeply cutting off the, the low end. Uh, at 112 hertz. And so that's pretty much all that that really nice uh, Earthworks SR25 microphone needed for EQ. So I'm not gonna do much more than that. Maybe if you're using a cheaper lower end microphone, which I use a lot, uh, is uh, you know you, maybe you have to uh, dip out different parts of the spectrum, or maybe you need to get some more top end back into the thing and have the symbols really shine and brightness of them shine through. And so you wanna add boost a little bit of the top end as well. And so that's it for all of the main microphones here. Let's have a listen to all of the mics together, a full drum mix, and uh, let's bypass the EQs and put them back in. And that should be a really dramatic effect to hear all of the microphones without their main EQs in and then putting them back in for full fidelity. And so isn't it a massive difference that the EQ makes on the microphones? Uh, you know, putting it in, taking it out, putting it back in. It really cleans up the entire mix. Uh, each shell and cymbal is really singing to its full fidelity. Uh, you know, there's, there's not any washiness. Uh, you know, of, of any uh, voices drowning out one another. Each of the shells are sounding really full fidelity and things like that. It's a lot more clear and the drum uh, performance is a lot more clear, clear and crisp and just, you know, it just sounds better, right? And so, you know, of course there's a lot more we can do for the processing, compression and gates and editing and things like that. Not in this lesson though, we do a lot of that. We go over all that kind of stuff in recordio.com and here on YouTube. So be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram where we release all kinds of free lessons like this. And uh, we're even talking some behind the scenes in uh, you know recording studios and recording sessions and scenario, different scenarios and things like that. And uh, check out recordio.com where we have our awesome subscription uh, service there and our wicked community of recording enthusiasts like yourself. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in some more lessons. Bye.